The Art of Villainy, A Guide to Finding the Evil in You by Tommy Nyberg Chapter 1 What is a Villain? So, you've taken the route of becoming a villain. Let me tell you first off, this will be way better than having to work at Subway. Before we start your journey, do you know what the term villain means? Well, let's get more informed about the word. A villain is described as an evil, probably dangerous person who performs evil acts. Now evil can be anything really, from not tipping the pizza guy to bombing Russia. But to be the best evil villain, you've got to be as evil as possible. So I have one question for you. Do you have what it takes? You might think you have what it takes, but you just might be wrong. Very wrong. This particular career is far from simple. It involves much training, studying, and most of all, commitment. If you aren't willing to work hard, then I suggest you leave now and take up something a little easier, like psychology or genetic engineering. Chapter 2 Your History By your history, I mean two things. First off, you need to abandon your family and their traditions. No villain I know ever asks his mom to wash his evil underwear. You need to ditch them, disappear, and don't answer your phone. Also, it's not a good idea to marry and have kids. The more people that live with you, the more mouths you have to feed, and an evil villain needs their limited funds to plot evil, not feed Bobby his Cheerios. Secondly, there's the history of the villains that have come before you. Mostly, all of them have been defeated in the end, but with the help of this video, we'll try to prevent that. Villainy has been around for millions of years. Good vs. Evil is one of the most simple and most popular story theme choices in many writings. So your career is pretty popular. Will you be? Chapter 3 Your External Opposite Now that you've chosen the ways of the dark side, you're going to need someone to oppose. A hero to try to ruin what you spent so much time building up. Otherwise known as your nemesis. Now there are special steps to be taken in picking a nemesis. First off, if you are not a supervillain, then do not choose a superhero to oppose. He will or she will splatter you against the wall in nothing flat. When picking one, think back to your childhood. Maybe there was someone who was always better than you. Pick someone you know you already have negative feelings for. Being evil to a complete stranger is no fun and really a waste of your evil time and energy. Chapter 4 Getting Started The first thing you're going to need is money. Money is the powerhouse to every evil empire and yours is no exception. But earning this money can take a while and the last thing you want to have to do is wait to turn evil. Once you've got a hold of your riches, now the real fun begins. The second thing you need on your big shopping list is a lair. Every villain needs a place to stay and a hotel room just won't cut it. You want your lair to be well hidden, away from prying eyes like the FBI or your nemesis. Another thing to take into consideration is the number of henchmen you'll have. 25 henchmen per every half acre of land you own is a pretty good estimate. This ensures that if your nemesis ever finds out where you live, there's no way he's getting into your lair without getting caught. Now the most important thing you'll need is an evil diabolical plan. The most popular plan is always world domination, but that really isn't very practical for the newly formed villain that you are. Start small. Darth Vader didn't build the Death Star in a day. Chapter 5 Little Evil Tweaks It's time you learn about evil etiquette. Let's work on that laugh of yours. A villain is nothing without his laugh, and yours had better be good, but not every laugh is a good evil laugh. Tee hee hee is a terrible evil laugh. Next tweak, your appearance. The tight fitting spandex and oddly colored underwear on the outside should be left for the heroes. You can pretty much wear anything you want. 
Black is always in style for the average villain to be. Capes are good too, but try a shorter one or you might be tripping over it all the time. You're going to have to develop an evil plotting look. It's a lot like the thinker, only way more evil. This should convey to your nemesis or anyone that happens to be around you that you are thinking and they should be running. Now you should be socially acceptable in the world of evil. And most importantly, you've saved yourself from embarrassment when attending evil parties, which of course is what you will do often. Evil people love to throw parties, and they love to invite people to converse and drink evil punch. These parties are great for spreading your name in the evil community. Here are a few things you might want to do while at an evil party. If you feel it necessary, take on the role of the mysterious loner by the punch bowl. Don't feel guilty about eating all the hors d'oeuvres. You're evil, remember? Talk about your evil plans. People find this interesting. One word. Karaoke. Point and laugh at someone. Don't tell them why. Start a conversation with someone. Halfway through, gasp and mutter something like, So you're the one he said was ugly. By the end of the night, you should be the life of the party, and people will respect you. Chapter 6 Pointless Evil You may be wondering how you can stand out in the world of evil. Well, my friend, the answer is quite simple. Pointless Evil Steal candy from a baby. Stand in an elevator and talk incessantly to those who board it. Send your neighbors fake letters from the IRS stating they are being summoned to court. Don't color inside the lines. Sing loudly and refuse to stop. Stand outside on a sidewalk and refuse to let people pass unless they give you the password. Chapter 7 Abandonment because life of crimes are very risky, some of us need a bailout plan. This is not something that you want to happen, but in some cases where your options are limited, this is the best choice to make. Ask yourself the following questions to see if fleeing the scene is the right thing to do. Am I about to get killed? Am I about to get arrested? Are my henchmen cowering in fear? Am I cowering in fear? Have I realized my evil plan will not work no matter what I do? Have I suddenly become ill? Have I just said something that makes absolutely no sense? Have I accidentally proclaimed my undying love for my nemesis? Are my shoes untied? Has my nemesis cornered me? Are all my henchmen gone? Am I greatly outnumbered? If your answer is yes to any of the above questions, then abandoning your evil plan is most likely the best idea. It may be embarrassing, but it's better than suffering a huge defeat or being arrested. You'll get them next time. Maybe. With that, you're ready to start your evil career. I wish you the best of luck. I just hope if and when you take over the world, you will spare me. The End